Well, shoot, I thought I was gonna spend my Saturday afternoon in early spring putzing in the garden and playing in the greenhouse with my seedlings, but no, I woke up to snow. But that's okay. Every gardener, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So let me show you a few tips I've learned over the years to protect my seedlings in the greenhouse when it's gonna freeze outside. So let's do this. One of the most important things I've learned over the years is when dealing with the greenhouse, one of the most important things I've come to realize is that air circulation is key. So I actually leave my greenhouse door cracked 24 seven, no matter what the season is. The other thing I do is provide air circulation 24 seven. And that means a fan, even in the winter. This fan is funky and as rusty as it looks, it is a workhorse for me. It keeps the aphids down, it keeps the air circulation going. And this is especially important in the winter. And that's because in the winter, you don't want the cold air to settle down on the plants. You need that air moving all the time. And you see that window behind me? That's cracked just, just a little bit. And that also provides good airflow. So I'll give you a tour of who we have in here. Uh, these are seedlings, uh, Mechanopsis or, or blue poppies that um, I've started from seed and that's for a plant seal coming up. We've got all kinds of seedlings, even tomato seedlings did just fine, even though last night's temperature got to 28 degrees outside. Here we have a Chinese cabbage waiting to go on the ground. And we've got Iceland poppies, onions, which I think are the hardiest plants on the planet. Strawberry starts, yes. We have primrose starts. We divided up primroses for our upcoming plant sale to support our local public radio station and a variety of perennials. Hi everybody. Now let me show you what I did last night to prepare these plants for the cold that was predicted. So when the weatherman called for temperatures plummeting to 28 degrees Fahrenheit, I knew I had to get to work. So one thing I did was find some fabric or any kind of material to cover these seedlings. And it can be a sheet, um, a shower curtain. And in this case, I grabbed some tablecloths that I kind of snitched from um, a public function. We had a big dinner, a fundraiser, and these tablecloths covered all the tables. And I said, hey, I'll take those. So anyway, this is what I did. Another thing that's really important, and this is something that gardeners don't realize, is if your plants are going to go through a freeze period and you're kind of wondering, should I water or shouldn't I water? Well, I learned this story from Helen and Scott Nearing. These are pioneer gardeners that grew um, an amazing things in, in greenhouses in, in Maine and Vermont. And in their weather report, it was gonna plummet below freezing as well. They had all kinds of seedlings, like lettuce seedlings growing in their greenhouse. And their quandary was the same thing. Do we water or not? Do we water kind of like what um, orchardists do in Florida, protect their, um, their orange or their citrus crops? Or do we just let them go dry? So they did an experiment. Um, they watered part of their lettuce seedlings and they left others go dry. Guess which one survived? Hmm. Well, before I tell you that, I tried the same experiment a number of years ago. We're talking decades. Same thing. I actually, here in Kodiak, Alaska, planted lettuce seedlings in the raised beds in October. Now, how weird is that? I just wanted to see how they would do. And then I covered them with, um, uh, uh, you know, plastic hoops, like PVC hoops, and I covered that with plastic, and I didn't touch them all winter. 
And guess what? Come late winter, around March or so, I lifted the plastic to see how many seedlings had survived. And it was amazing. It was something like 75% of the seedlings, these lettuce seedlings that we'd otherwise think are pretty darn tender, did great. So anyway, I'm telling you this because in Helen and Scott Nearing's situation, same deal. The lettuce seedlings that received water before the freeze died. They went to mush. Those cells that were full of water just went like balloons. The seedlings that didn't receive any water, they wilted a little bit, but they rebounded. If you're faced with a similar situation, do not overwater your plants. All the ones you see behind me, all these guys behind me, didn't receive any water last night. They stayed fairly dry. And the next day when I removed the cover, they look fine, yay! Three things to remember, and that is provide good air circulation. Number two is cover them, right? And number three is don't water them. Okay, I'll see you next time in the garden. Cheers!